next we will hear from William Courtney. Good evening. Uh, and thank you, Jason and Connie, for putting this together. And thank you, public, for uh, attempting to sort all this out. Um, if you choose to elect me, uh, we are going to have our hands full. Before this conference is over, in the next two hours, uh, eight species will go extinct. Um, in the next four years, between 150 and 500,000 species will go extinct. Uh, these are numbers that, according to Science Magazine, could lead up to a 50% extinction um, which would put us um, up in one of the highest mass extinctions. The last mass extinction, the fifth, was the dinosaurs. They only lost 17% of the families. We are currently facing a 50% loss. Um, this last week on the cover of the New York Times, uh, there was uh, an article about the canopies collapsing, that the forests in uh, South America, North America, and Siberia um, are giving way. Uh, the current uh, global warming has been moderated by the forests. They consume a vast quantity of the CO2, and as they, uh, as those uh, ecosystems fall, uh, the CO2 will be rising very quickly. This is an issue that um, is not just bipartisan, it's global, and it requires very clear and focused attention. Um, an area of my background is in cannabis. Cannabis uh, is able to fix five times as much CO2 as an acre of trees, and we need theories in place um, because as the, uh, as the forests begin to collapse, we're going to have very serious problems. The economy, obviously very serious. We added another um, $600, $600 billion in debt in August. At that rate, uh, we're going to exceed our revenues within a year. Um, I also believe that term limits are critical. Uh, the professional lobbyist politician, um, I hope that fades away into history, and that we have people uh, representing a district bringing that to Washington, discussing, giving their uh, input, and then uh, stepping back and letting someone else come up and contribute to the dialogue. Uh, I hope you choose to uh, support me in this effort. I believe that I'll be able to make some significant progress. William Courtney, do you support the American Jobs Act? Uh, why or why not? And what, in addition, would you do to create jobs? Um, I would have to agree that basically it's um, moving in the right direction. But specifically, um, when we do recovery and investment, uh, as opposed to, I mean, there's been a lot of support on building the roads. And you, and you bring in some large company, and you lay down a bunch of concrete, and it certainly feels nice to drive on a nice highway. Um, in Mendocino, the West Company is a um, business that works with micro uh, loans um, and supports businesses of uh, five employees or less. And when you put a, a very small amount of money in the hands of a small group that's trying to survive, uh, you get some fairly dramatic results that leads to long-term results. Um, we, if we make major construction and consume vast quantities of money, uh, those are not going to generate jobs over the long haul. So I think we need to focus um, in the Small Business Administration and in the micro business and put our recovery money into the people because we're, we need to create new jobs. Uh, you know, we're in a global economy. I've been to China several times. I've seen people work very hard for very little money. And if, if we're going to compete in this same globe, we're going to have to come up with a ways to support each other, uh, create new job uh, avenues that we haven't had before. And when people are desperate enough and they have an opportunity, and that's where the, the microloan is very important because it, it gives a small group of people a chance to nurture an idea. And I think that's where the innovation um, of Americans could, could get ourselves back on our feet and back employed. Um, but they need, they need access to that capital uh, with, without which you know, it's a bunch of theory that goes nowhere. Okay, our aging population requires more care than any previous generation. Do you support single-payer health care? If so, how would you implement it? If not, what other program would you advocate? Uh, the concept is basically very sound, but as the baby boomers move forward, the bulge of users grows large and those that support it, you know, it gets smaller. Uh, we, we're looking at a multi-trillion shortfall in Social Security and in pension funds not being funded without revenue streams. So there's, there's a shortage of revenues that's going to affect a lot of these projects. Um, the insurance companies may not really want this all consolidated and their margins taken out. And they're an extremely powerful group that has a lot of swing. I mean, we tossed them a couple trillion dollars when they were too large to fail. 
Um, so there's a couple of impediments that are there in the way, um, but one of the big ones is unless we get the military to kind of uh, move some of the funding over into the domestic side, um, with 69% of our gross domestic product going just to service the debt, uh, there is not money left over for a lot of these projects. So uh, where is the money going to come from for expanding um, and are the insurance companies going to allow a consolidation and a reduction in their income? Okay, William, how would you bring home funding for public schools, and what is your uh, opinion of the voucher program? Yeah, it seems like the voucher program is a way to take care of your own or to take some money and do something with it more creatively, which some people could take advantage of. But I think in general, if we're trying to raise the standards for everyone, the schools have to come along with us. Um, it's it's horrifying. I used to spend uh, a large portion of my childhood in libraries. You know, libraries are open a couple days a week if you're lucky. Um, all the programs at school are being cut off, and the you know the electives, the evening classes, the uh, things that were considered non-essential. And so, as the schools contract, uh, the kids that are going through them have so much less of an opportunity. With with the lack of money. The priorities are, are very, very important. And if we're going to be dumping tons of money into stationing military personnel all over the world in 130 different countries, then the kids at home don't have school. So I don't understand how that process has dealt with. But if we care about our children, we're going to have to pull some of the money out of the military and make it available so that the schools are open, so that they have art classes, so that they can um, take full advantage of their childhood. Thank you. And William, the same question. Congress is struggling to fund our U.S. government. Where would you cut? Uh, military obviously comes to mind um, as the only one that appears to be having a fairly uh, flush budget. Uh, and I, I don't understand why it's such a sac sacrosanct area. Um, you look at all the areas that are in free fall, um, and as I mentioned when I first started out, the environment is in free fall. Um, there, there's so much to be done to preserve the planet, uh, to preserve the genome, and um, this spending you know, huge amounts of our money around the world in military actions um, is, is, a, is an idea whose time has passed. Um, the fact that we have such a huge deficit, the fact that such a large percentage of our gross domestic product is going to service that debt is is an incredibly difficult situation. Uh, the fact that that debt is growing uh, so fast um, is very complex. Uh, but, I, but if it's not the single focus of, of Congress, um, then I'm not certain uh, what our future holds. Thank you, William. William, how would, um, under Eisenhower, you've heard and probably recall, the top marginal tax rate was 90%. It's currently 35. What do you think it should be? And um, how would you change our current tax policies? Um, it would seem like a flat rate uh, would just to eliminate the deductions, the avoidance, the loopholes, uh, the endless runarounds the, um, would allow everyone to participate in proportion to what they can. Um, an enormous amount of energy seems to be spent on uh, tax avoidance, tax minimization, tax transfers, and that's energy that if we don't spend it on um, dealing with our environment um, and uh, the loss of species, you know, we've got a full-time job trying to survive, and this the whole tax thing needs to be simplified, needs to be equitable, and let's get on uh, with what are we going to do with the money that's left, and one of the one of those things has to be we have to address the environment before it collapses around us. Thank you, William. This one with William. This is a question on energy policy. The question is, according to the Nuclear Energy Institute, about 20% of electricity in the U.S. is generated by nuclear power. In the wake of the Fukushima disaster, Germany has pledged to shut down all their nuclear power plants by 2022. Would you make a similar pledge for the U.S.? If yes, what would you do to make up the 20% loss in energy without increasing emissions? Um, I definitely would make a similar pledge. Um, I've spent a good part of my last 20 years um, studying uh, the movement of the tides, and particularly at the bottom of the ocean. And my favorite hobby is to overweight, sit on the bottom, and, and watch how, how the moon affects the Earth. <laughs> There's enough energy that comes up against this district to provide at least California, if not Western United States, with zero CO2 energy. Um, 
it's subsurface, it's not exposed to surge, a uh, huge resource. And if, if that industry could be finalized and the designs in Europe are fairly sophisticated and implemented, um, it, would, it would provide not only a technology locally with jobs in the installation and maintenance um, and then the distribution through California, but it would, it would create a technology that we could export to South America, other countries around the world that are currently weighing the coal, nuclear power, uh, petroleum fuel. Um, we have got to stop the CO2. This, is, this just is not an option. I mean, when the canopies of the trees come down, it's going to get really crazy. And, and that's what's happening at, at this point. Thank you. Will everyone pledge not to take any PAC money whatsoever? Uh, and yeah, I think the concept of a corporation is a failed concept. It's not been around for a millennium. Um, it's a, a way for people to consolidate uh, greed and uh, reduce the risk to the minimum amount. Uh, so the idea that without a child development, I mean, it doesn't take a psychiatrist to know that a corporation is not a person and to give them First Amendment uh, f protection for freedom of speech uh, is, I mean, it's bizarre. It's the same 5-4 group that said Gore really shouldn't be president. I mean, where's the oversight on, on, on that group that allows them to make decisions? Um, the idea that a corporation um, is an individual and has those rights, uh, I'm so opposed to it that I don't think I'm going to have to worry about rejecting it. I'm, no one's offered it, and I'm pretty certain that they're not, given uh, my current feelings about the whole subject. Do you oppose or approve of the huge pipeline from Canada to Mexico? Um, I've expressed it several times this evening. Uh, uh, environmental collapse is a term that creates psychic numbing, and so we don't even want to talk about it. Um, when you talk about forest canopies collapsing, that's an issue. When you're moving petroleum products around, uh, the spills, mm -hmm. the burning, the consumption, I mean, it's absolutely incredulous that this is being supported. Uh, the oil industry has a stranglehold on our Congress. It has a stranglehold on this nation. It has a stranglehold on the planet. Um, this may require actions if it's, you know, we have not had this before, but if the individuals in this, of this country decide to amend the Constitution to address this, that's likely to be the only end run because you'll not be able to get to this through the special, uh, special interests that, that make the decisions in Washington. So part of this job is to mobilize the experience here, the 600 mile coastline for production of a, a zero CO2 energy policy and take that message to the people and try to get it by the oil industry into a reality. Um, and that is a huge, a huge problem. The question is, starting with Jared, what can you do to reform local government pension problems? Um, and you know, the identification that the uh, pension uh, uh, funding at the federal level is in a multi-trillion dollar shortfall, that's a lot of money to be short. The, and they, they were set up without a revenue stream to support it. Um, there, there is going to be big problems uh, going forward because we have such an incredible amount of debt that we're trying to carry that there's not enough money to run the government, so we're borrowing money, growing the debt to survive. Uh, that is, uh, is a failed kind of long-term plan. Um, a lot of the promises, a lot of the safety nets, um, they're evaporating. And, and the question is, we got to look at maybe the right to work, but maybe not the right to not work. And so we're, there's going to be a shift in the way we take care of each other and those less fortunate by giving them the right. Thank you, William. Uh, also, I'd like to thank the two of you for hosting this. It's uh, it was an excellent opportunity, and for the community for joining. And I don't uh, envy your job of trying to sort this all out and making a decision going forward. I feel that uh, what I bring to the table is an ability to solve problems. It doesn't take a psychiatrist to see that things are pretty crazy in Washington. We need very serious change. Uh, we need change in the debt. We need change in the environment. Um, and it's a job to which I'm willing to commit 100% uh, of my time. Uh, CourtneyForCongress.org. I think I'm the only organizational uh, website out there. I don't understand this is not a commercial effort. That goes along with my idea that these should be, there should be term limits that you go in there, you give it your best, and then you let someone else have a, have a shot at it. I think uh, that keeps the special interest at bay. They have to scramble more to keep up with people. Uh, I think these are all issues that need to be addressed and need to be addressed immediately.